So I, I very much like the way we've been arranged today uh, for the speaking because uh, uh, my talk is going to be even greedier, I'm afraid. Um, on a daily basis, I work with artificial intelligence. Uh, I come from a company that uh, works in the advertising space and we get to deal with a lot of uh, fraud online. Um, uh, and I'm going to start with a small uh, definition. I mean, uh, I want to emphasize that I, I totally agree with all the positive things that, that have been mentioned. There's no need to go on about that. But I want to show something how things can unravel if we don't act now, potentially. It's going to be a vision. So what is, I'm going to start with a definition of uh, what is a social bot. Well, a social bot is, is a program, an algorithm that lives in social media. Uh, it looks like us, it behaves like us, and recently started to communicate like us. Uh, bots come in three different flavors. Uh, the first two are not really um, a concern to the debate today, but I'll mention them anyway. One type of bot is created as a, a clickbaiting tool, just to make money. Another type is called a vanity bot, and they are created literally to artificially in increase the amount of followers of people, for example, on Twitter. But the third type are called political bots. Um, these bots are created to alter the perception of reality of the users, human users, and to influence the debate. Now, Twitter yesterday had roughly 350 million active users, and the research says that 50%, 15%, sorry, of Twitter accounts can be run by bots. Well, 15 out of 350, that's more than the population of Spain. It's a, it's a big army. Um, if we add to this artificial accounts on YouTube, on Instagram, if we add to this chatbots on Tinder, Snapchat, or Reddit. The vision that we see is something that forces us to appreciate that we as humans are not alone on social media. We have a lot of neighbors, algorithmic uh, neighbors. So what do these bots do? The funny, funny thing is that most of the time they just stay quiet, they sleep, and they wait for orders, for a, for a good moment to be woken up. Um, so what kind of orders, you may say? Well, one of, we learned a lot of things from Cambridge Analytica case, but one of the most important one is what could be the future of political influence. And we are, we started to see, we have evidence for that, that using big data to find uh, small, uh, very small preferences of each voter and psychological weaknesses of every one of us, it's a reality, it's no longer a vision. This is what has happened. So what kind of data is really being collected and used about us? Well, first of all, data about, about uh, our uh, demographics and geographics. So who we are on the outside, our gender, our uh, race, education, or the level of the income. The second type is about uh, our profile as customers online, or what kind of lifestyle we have. So what cars we buy, what clothes we wear, what magazines we read. The third type is called uh, behavioral. So this describes us who we are on the inside, what drives us to, to take action, what motivates us uh, in the world. Now, it turns out, again, from the Cambridge Analytica case, that we don't really require that much of the data to be able to describe a person very accurately. Um, the learning is that it takes 70 likes for the model to be able to describe a person better than the person's friends. It takes 150 likes to be able to describe a person better than the parents of the person. And 300 likes leaves our long time partners outgunned. So 300 likes, what is it like for an average user these days? Half a month? 
it, it's, it's nothing. It's you know, a couple of activities online and the algorithm knows more about you uh, than your partners. And these are, again, facts. Now, I'm going to add to that. If we talk about the other increasingly complex algorithms that are already in place and they are designed to alter the reality. Deep fakes. I'm sure we heard about deep fakes. Mr. Emilian, you said you worried about one day an article may kind of, uh, come up saying that you stole money. Well, with deep fakes, you can see your face on a TV saying, I did steal the money, I'm not paying taxes, and I'm a bad person. Uh, if you browse online on YouTube and you, you look for Barack Obama deep fake, you can see him talking uh, about minorities in a very bad way. You can see him swearing. This is all synthetically created by an algorithm, but it's unbelievably difficult to dif differentiate uh, from the reality. The next thing, filter bubbles, so-called filter bubbles. So the algorithms deciding for us what kind of content to show us on the, uh, on, on the search engines, for example. Um, a new term that's appearing called laser phishing. So laser phishing are the new generation of bots that go on social media and they learn how our relatives, how our friends communicate with us, and then they use this knowledge to, again, communicate with us in the same way, using exactly the same sweet phrases that we hear from our relatives and for friends, and kind of navigate our perception of reality, not always in the right direction. If we put all of this together, uh, we're going dangerously close to something that uh, Mr. Jaume mentioned. It's called reality apathy. It's a state where people get so many different versions of reality. They hear so many different voices about one particular situation. But they just say, that's it, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I'm not going to listen to anything anymore. I'm just going to like believe in, in, in what I think. I'm not going to stay open to different viewpoints. And this is the point where democracy starts to get in trouble. Because for a real democracy, we need access to different viewpoints in an open uh, environment. And again, as, as Sean said, everyone can talk on social media, but these days not everyone can get heard because the bots can outnumber us and they, they can just outshout whatever we say. Now, moving to the positives. It's not that the bots are running around the social media doing whatever they feel like all the time. We're starting to observe uh, positive technological developments that try to counteract all the wrongdoings. And the biggest players are becoming increasingly aware of the gravity of the situation. So we're slowing, uh, slowly moving into uh, the kind of artificial intelligence warfare where one type of good AI tries to tackle, find uh, all the breadcrumbs le le left behind by a bad AI. They're just going to follow one another. And one final remark for the end. No matter what happens on the technological side, there is a very important factor called the human factor, the, the factor of the users. Because it turns out the willingness to believe uh, sensational information is a real phenomenon and research shows that even debunking false media not always uh, causes the people to change their point of view once they heard the fake news it just stays with them at least to a certain degree so I'm gonna echo what uh, everyone previously said we have to work on increasing um, the awareness of what could potentially go wrong on social media and how to find traces of manipulation. Thank you very much. Okay.